Do you have courage to listen to what the Bible says about Eros? Do you want to hear it? The standards set forth in this Bible are not the same as the standards we now have in America. They're different standards. And you've got to decide which one you're going to accept. And I'm not going to water it down. I'm going to tell it to you like the Bible tells it. The Bible says that immorality is sin. But the Bible also indicates that sex is not a sin. It's the wrong use of sex that's sin. Many ancient and many modern writers have held the idea that the body is evil. George Bernard Shaw once wrote about the tyranny of the flesh. Plato thought that the body was evil. But the body is not evil. The Bible teaches that your body is sacred. The Bible teaches that for the Christian, that it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that includes your sex as well as every other part of your life. Now, there's a distinction in the New Testament. You'll have to watch out. You'll find it, by the way, in this little book we want to send you, The World, the Flesh, and the Devil. There's a difference between the flesh and the body in the Scriptures. But a wrong view of the body was responsible, in my judgment, for the suppression of discussions of sex and sex in the last century that I think caused a great deal of harm. I think there's something good about what we've seen, but we've gone too far in our openness about this subject. It ought to be discussed. It ought to be preached about. And the Word of God should be proclaimed on this subject because all the way through the Scriptures, we have the teachings of God on the subject of sex. The Scripture says that Adam knew his wife and they became one flesh. That word knew carries with it the idea of sex. Now, why did God give sex? The Bible is clear about that. First, for the propagation of the human race. We're all here because of sex. Second, the climax and enjoyment of married love. Notice married love. God has put a fence around marriage and says, Thou shalt not commit immorality. And then thirdly, to express unity. The unity of the man and the wife, they become one flesh, and it becomes a type of Christ in the church, and it becomes very sacred. But when sin entered the Garden of Eden, sex, which was supposed to be sacred, became perverted, and lust came in. So that today, something that was supposed to be sacred and wonderful and glorious has been perverted into lust and has become sin. Now, why does God say, Thou shalt not commit immorality? To protect your future marriage. Secondly, to protect your body. You say, well, my body doesn't need protecting. Don't think it doesn't. VD is sweeping the country. Illegitimacy has doubled in the last two or three years in spite of all the pills and in spite of all the advance in medicine. It's getting worse instead of better. Thirdly, to protect you psychologically. Psychologists are now finding that that first experience that you have outside of marriage never leaves. That guilt always remains. And guilt is one of the greatest psychological problems being faced in the world today. And then to protect society. If we become immoral as a society, we destroy civilization. And we become decadent as they did in Rome and other civilizations, and we're destroyed. So God says, for our own good, thou shalt not commit immorality. Now, how can a young person have victory over eros? The Bible says to flee fornication. And the mark of a Christian is self-control and self-discipline. No way to overcome this tremendous temptation except in Jesus Christ. Paul wrote to young Timothy and said, Keep thyself pure. You cannot live pure in 1973 or 1974 apart from Jesus Christ. He can give you the strength and the power 
and the victory to live a pure life. He will help you to flee fornication.